So if you're not making money, it's because you're not really caring enough about somebody else to find out what their real needs is and say, how do I fill those needs? Your inspired mission is not your passion. You've been hoodwinkled by self-development gurus and they don't know the difference between the etymologies. And it's now it's in the lexicon that's actually in error now. Your, your passion comes from pasio, comes from posse, comes from pati, which means to suffer. Compassion means to suffer with people. When you're living by your lower values and not by your highest value, and you enter into the amygdala, you activate the animal passions and try to get a prey and try to avoid the predator, try to get a pleasure, try to avoid a pain. You end up hedonistically pursuing fantasies and you're striving for that which, which is unavailable and you're trying to avoid that which is unavoidable because life has a pair of opposites and that's passion and it means to suffer because you're suffering pursuing something that's a fantasy and your life becomes a nightmare pursuing it and you have doubt in yourself. Do not confuse your mission with passion. It is not the same. Do your homework, do your studies, go look at the difference in the etymologies and you will see that because people are making a, a completely confusing language out there. Your inspired mission, which is a, a, a calling of the heart, is not the passion. A passion is an impulsive, exciting, instant gratifying, pleasurable addiction in comparison to a poised, enthused, inspired focus of a mission. Enthusiasm and confused. Enthusiasm is not excitement and jumping upon chairs and going, yes, 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 rah, rah, rah. That's ridiculous. It's childish. It's a, it's a herd instinct. Enthusiasm means entheos, the God within. And as St. Augustine said, the God within means a poised, present, powerful, purposeful, prioritized, productive state within that is centered, not eccentric with emotions, but centered with grace. Entheos. So don't confuse enthusiasm with excitement. Don't confuse mission with passion. Don't confuse love with infatuation. Um, the mass audiences and the mass gurus out there are promoting that, and it misleads people into thinking that, and it confuses them. An inspired mission, when you're living by your highest value, is balanced. It's objective. Objectivity means even-minded, neutral. It's not polarized. It's not excited and elated. You're not going to create the greatest things in life by that fantasy world. You're going to do it by being poised and present and productively purposeful and prioritized and patient. And, and really, really profound in your pursuit. The greatest achievements, the greatest genius is comes from perseverance and perseverance comes from having long and space and time horizons to pursue something that's deeply meaningful, regardless of the obstacles and challenges you might perceive. So how do you, how do you stay focused on that? If you get distracted from that, it ain't it. The reason why you can't stay focused on your, because the passion is not your mission. Your passion is a fantasy. It's an immediate gratifying whim. It's not really you, even though that's what you keep hearing in all the literature. But the reality is your mission is something that's steady. You don't waver from your mission. You waver from your passions. You don't waver from your mission because your mission is a calling. It's inspiring. And if you're going after it and you get sidetracked, and you don't know how to make money out of it, it's because if you've got your passion, you don't have your mission. And that's different. And passions are things you think that are going to be really neat, they're going to be cool, but they're not something that you're dedicated to, and there is no turning back. There's a relentless pursuit of the mission that there's no turning back on. There's no side ventures, no distractions. It's focused. And that highest value is that way. Now, you're not going to make money you got to wake up in the reality that you don't make money unless you care enough about other human beings to help them fulfill their highest values and needs. If you help other people fulfill their highest values and you do it in a way that inspires your highest values, you found your niche in life. I'm going to make a statement that's going to offend some of you, but that's good. If you're poor, it's because you don't care about humanity. You're focused on yourself. You're self-absorbed instead of going out and finding out what people need and what they want and what they would be inspired by and finding out a niche, not just a fad, not just a trend, but a real classical niche that is something that really serves people that's consistent and then pursuing it and finding the one that you are inspired to fulfill that makes a difference in people's lives 
and do it more effectively and efficiently than the competition and deliver that product service or idea in a way that is is efficient to people. And if you do, you will have a demand and then you'll have a supply and then you'll have an economics. Money comes from having equanimity within yourself, not being proud, looking down on people and not listening to them, not being altruistic and sacrificing potential profits, but being equitable with them and having a fair exchange and a sustainable exchange with them in a transaction that allows them to get their highest values met while you get your highest value met. Mine and my highest value is teaching and research and, and sharing, teaching. So if I'm doing that and I find the things that people want and need most in their life that they want to learn about, and I find that niche, boom, people want it, I deliver it, there's an exchange, we grow. That's my responsibility. I have the responsibility to care enough to find out what people want and then find out what inspires me and find out where they overlap and then target that and then deliver that. Because if I do, my sensory rewards of of being able to receive the rewards come because of my motor activities that give the rewards. My, my serve makes my deserve. And money is a manifestation of fair exchange and sustainable delivered, not from pride, not from shame, but from love in a way that fills other people's needs and their highest needs. So if you're not making money, it's because you're not really caring enough about somebody else to find out what their real needs is and say, how do I fill those needs? directly with your own creative genius or indirectly with other people's creative genius and products and get it out to them efficiently and care to refine it and package it in such a way that it's delivering quality service and quality products to them. If you do, there's no lack of money. There's an abundance of money on this planet if we go out and serve. And you have to have a value on serving. There's three things that make up wealth. You have to have a commitment to serving people, vast numbers of people, an endless number of people, and a vast desire to raise your own life and standards. You have to have some sort of amb ambition, which means ambi, which means two-sidedness. And you have to also transcend the idea that money is good and evil. It's neither good nor evil. It's just a transactional measurement system to show how well you're do doing a fair exchange and pursue that. I didn't have a, a, a value on wealth building until I was 28. I had value on serving, I had a value on saving money and then buying things and consumable things that depreciated, but I didn't have a value on wealth building until 28. And I realized that I had to balance serving other people and I had to also put money away for me. Because if I don't put money away for me, I'm gonna be a slave all my life to money instead of have it become its master by having it work for me. So you, you wanna be able to take a portion of whatever you earn and put it into savings and put it in buying assets so it starts working for you because when you value you that way, the world starts to value. So you have a responsibility of finding out what people need, finding out what inspires you, finding out making fair exchange, taking a portion of it, putting it in savings and letting it invest, get passive income. So you're doing that because you love to do the service, not because you have to. But if you're not, if you're not selling what you're doing, you either don't have a value on it, you're not focusing on them, you're making assumptions. Many entrepreneurs go out there with assumptions about what the world needs instead of what the actual world needs. What's actually meeting it? You need to do a little survey and find out what the world is looking for. And make sure you're meeting it. There's Whatever your mission is, there's something in the world that needs that mission. And that's the magnificence of this world. That everybody's mission serves people. Whatever that is. There's a niche for it. Finding that niche. And the more universal you are and the more inspired you are, the more that niche just grows. So you can play on any scale you want today, particularly with the Internet. You can play on any scale. So prioritize your life. If you don't fill your day with the highest priority actions that inspire you, it's designed to fill up with low priority distractions that don't. And in the, if you ask yourself, what is the highest priority action I can do today that will serve the greatest number of people in the most effective and efficient way, in a way that will inspire me, and then how do I do that? And then tomorrow I do the same question. And I keep doing the highest priority action every single day that serves the greatest number of people. You have a fulfilling life on your way. When people see wealthy people, it's because they're serving vast numbers of people. When, when uh, the wealthiest man on the planet, Bezos right now, $150 billion or whatever, that's because his services are reaching people around the world in efficient, effective way. And that's why those people are wanting that service and he's, he's getting wealthy. And if people don't have a value on, on uh, serving people, it's, it's a fantasy.
thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining.